Hi, I'm Andrew from Ether Automation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do invoke URL in Deluge in Zoho CRM. So you may have seen a number of my previous videos where I just do an invoke URL willy nilly and just throw it in there. And what I found is that there's a lot of searches and a lot of people asking for some information about this. So I'm going to start off by sharing my screen and hopefully it is the right screen. So as you can see, I'm in, I'm in a function. I'm in a, a function in Zoho CRM. It's a brand new one. I'm calling this REST API test. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste a REST API or a, a, a invoke URL task here. Boom. So this may look familiar. If you've seen the Zoho CRM Deluge documentation, this may look familiar. So um, up at the top here is the URL. Um, in order for us to look closely at what's being sent and received, um, I'm actually going to use what's called request bin. Now, this is the, a free version, um, uh, Ether Automation. Uh, we have a private one we've spun up on our own server. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this URL. And I'm going to paste it in here and put it in quotes. OK, and because I want to keep this, I'm going to comment it out. Do that. And I'm actually just going to yeah, so second one is a type, right? And with all uh, API calls, um, there's four main ones. There's get, put, post, and delete. There's also other ones like patch, uh, but Zoho doesn't really support these. Actually, yeah, let's find out together if they support them. So we're going to do get, and I'm going to go info response so that we can see what gets returned. Let's save and execute. And it says success true. Now, if I go to the request bin, I can view exactly what was said. So the details, there's this, and then the headers, there's seven headers. Now, we didn't actually send this information. This information comes from Zoho itself. So the user agent is Deluge. The function name is REST API test. If I wanted to, I can go, um, as the next thing down you see was headers. Headers value, so we could paste that in here, but headers value requires um, a map. So let's show headers map equals map. Headers map equals a put. And, and let's, let's start out by putting something uh, normal in here. Say stuff, comma, wow. Look at this. And I can copy this and put it in the headers value. And then I can send this. And if you look at my request bin, there are now eight headers. And I put in this stuff. So you, you can do this. And this is what the headers value is. If you look at API documentation, let's go Zoho CRM API. <clears throat> Usually it's um, fairly defined. If I look at Java, no, not Java, maybe JavaScript native, you'll see that the headers, they define the headers and then they want to add authorization and if modify since. Um, I'm not a JavaScript expert, but usually if you do an API call, they want to define it. Um, if we talk, uh, in Deluge, they have it like this. So there is none in this particular example, but usually they'll require things like content type, right? Um, which uh, is actually our next thing here, this content type. Now, <clears throat> the unfortunate thing about Deluge is you have very little control over the content type. So content type, I'm just gonna go to the documentation. Um, there's, yeah, a default value, which is this one right here. 
this is the default value. So application, uh, blah, 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 your www form URL encoded. What this means is if I were to try and pass information in, in the next thing here, which is parameters, it's gonna show up in the URL. So let's actually do that. Go parameters and then let's go param map equals map param map dot put um, this goes in the URL and then I'll say wow 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 and there is a reason there's a very specific and important reason I'm putting that string I'm going to show you why so let's click save and execute and it didn't work because line number 26, I didn't copy and paste this down here. Make sure you remember that. So let's execute this and success true. And if I go, as you can see, it goes question mark, which um, you know is the parameter. And then this goes in the URL equals wow, 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 wow. Um, if I were to change this to another um, application type, you'll see that it passes through differently. So let's go application uh, JSON. Okay, so when I do application JSON for, I don't know why it does this, it says it needs to be a string. So we're just gonna convert this to a string. It's effectively the same thing. And in many cases, this is a, a bug patch. You should be able to see another video I have talking about this. So in this case, um, this get request no longer uses, um, you know, has this information in the URL, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo a few things. I just want to go back and I'm going to make this a uh, post, right? So I'm going to send this now as a post request. Go to the request bin. You see there's post. And now this goes in the URL is, is in here, but in the headers, content type. Anyways, so, um, oh, let's go to raw. So there we go. So this is the raw data. It says this goes in the URL equals wow, 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 because that's also how it looked in the URL up here, right? Um, if you want that to look like JSON, so if I um, info param map this, um, I can always then go and change the content type from application URL uh, uh, encoded to JSON, and then let's add dots to string. Again, you could watch my other video on this, <clears throat> and I can save and execute. And so this now will match what is in the request bin if I go to raw. As you can see, control F, it matches exactly. And that's because the content type is application JSON and the, uh, the amount, the, the value. Now I might, we'll see if it works. I might be able to say, no, it doesn't. Okay. So the next thing down is uh, we've done params. So parameters is essentially the body unless it's um, uh, the URL encoded and then it's params. If uh, you're looking for something similar, uh, you can always look at Postman and Postman has the same thing. So let's go www.google.ca and I go params uh, query and then value is wow, 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 right? Um, this request does not have a body, so we can go to form data and do a post. And then this would essentially be the same kind of thing. So let's actually show that. If I grab this here and then paste this in here, pipe dream params test, wow, 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 wow. I can send this and there, it shows up just like that. I can see the query parameters. Um, Anyway, so let's go back to this. And there's a few other things. There's files. I'm not going to go into files in this video, uh, but it's not, not fun. Uh, connection. We could do that here. Connection. 
Um, if you remember from my previous videos, this connection is actually a built-in feature to Zoho CRM and is bar none the best feature there is. So if you create a connection with another service, Zoho will maintain that connection. This is not really something that's helpful if it's like just your, a username and password, but once you get into OAuth 2 and requiring access tokens, this is super helpful. So we're just going to, um, I don't know, we'll do Zoho's CRM modules, right? And copy, I could put that in here. There we go, it's very easy. I'm not gonna, well, I am gonna run a test. <clears throat> so now if I go to request bin, you'll see that in the headers, there's now an authorization, which is the auth token. Am I worried about sharing my auth token with you? No, because this is gonna stop working after like five minutes and editing takes longer than that. So let's go back. Next one down is detailed. And this one's actually interesting. So if you notice, um, true. If you notice here, it just says success true, right? And that's actually the body that, that, that gets returned from the other service. But if we look at our request bin, there's more than just the body that gets sent in uh, a, a HTTP request. There's also these headers, right? Which is super important if you ever don't know why something didn't work, you're not getting a response. You can always look at the headers. Now, again, with other services like Postman, right? I can view the headers, right? It's built into the, the service, but in uh, Zoho Deluge, you have to define that you want to see the headers. So let's do that here. So I'm going to click detailed and true, right? We're going to run that here. And then this is all the information. So here's my response code is 200, right? Um, th this is the response text. This would be the body is right here, response text. And then the response header is all this stuff here, right? Uh, as you can see, they respond with application JSON, um, uh, which is, is fairly standard. Next one down is response format. Also very interesting. Let me just go to my documentation for this response format. So <clears throat> sometimes you will hit an endpoint and then it will respond and download a file. And then if you info this, right? Like we have here, if we go info response, it's going to, um, it's going to just show you a bunch of gobbledygook. Right? It's a bunch of, bunch of stuff that's not helpful. So if you're using this endpoint specifically to download like a PDF, um, this is gonna be very important for you. Response format, and the answer is file. The only answer is ever file. It does not work in any other case. So we can do that here. Response format is file. And then, um, yeah, this is, this is, it's basically, when I say that it's a file and it, it comes in as JSON, it just converts it to a text file, like a .txt file. Um, but this can be helpful if it's a CSV, right? Um, but this is mostly, uh, the, this is most helpful if it's a PDF, because if you do info a PDF, it's just gonna return like mess and you actually wanna save it as a file so that you can attach it to a record in Zoho. Again, I have another video on this. You can watch that at another time. And finally, we have this response decoding, which is helpful in some circumstances. I, I've done a lot of Zoho deluge work in my life. And I've honestly only attempted to use this once. Um, I'm considering whether or not this should be in this video. Yeah, okay, so let's imagine, let's imagine it responds a certain way and like ASCII, right? I can do something like this um, and it's gonna decode this value into that, um, into the, you know, it's gonna assume it's like the special, you know what? I, I don't even know how to describe this. The, actually, yes, I do. Copy this. So if you notice here, I have this post, I'm gonna turn this to a get for a second and I'm gonna save and execute. 
And I actually do not want this to be application JSON. So we are going to treat it like application URL encoded. Boom. Application URL encoded. And then let's take away the two string. There we go. Okay, so if you notice this, this is now going back in the URL, right? This is exactly what we put. However, let's imagine for a second, I'm gonna put a space here and I'm gonna put a, a slash here. And then over here, I'm gonna put a dash. If I then run this, Notice how it does this, uh, this thing right here. It's the, the percent sign 20 and percent sign 2F, right? This is called URL encoding because certain characters can't be in the URL, right? It's going to URL encode it. Now, right here, it's already doing this, right? And in some other cases, you have to manually do this. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. But um it's possible like this is just a type of encoding it just like the computer treats some of the bits differently for whatever reason so down here for response decoding right there is a, a standard a standard one which is utf-8 so this here is like the standard for the internet right if you're an english speaker in the western world you're, you're decoding like this, right? So I can respond and you're, I'm gonna send this and, and there's gonna be no change. However, I could have it decoded as if it's ASCII and this should give me a garbled mess. Response header, there you go. So it's now a, a, a garbled mess, right? Because it's, well, okay, it's treating it like a file. And I actually wanna get rid of detail true. There we go. Mm, let's see if I can find a better example of this one. Um, let's try this. One of these has got a oh, X Mac Turkish. That's that's definitely got to make it a garbled mess. Problem is we're using pretty standard characters here. I don't know all my encoding. No, I don't know. But regardless, it will decode the response a certain way. Again, you're not going to need this. I'm I'm actually very sorry. I used so much of this video on this feature. So this is basically how to use um, uh, the invoke URL in Deluge. The other tools we've used are uh, request bin. Uh, you could just Google request bin. The other one is Postman, right? You could just use Postman. I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next video.